You ever get that feeling like you're being watched? For some reason, and I can't quite place my finger on it, but I'm getting this feeling like I'm being watched right now, even as I'm speaking. It's really strange. <laughs> hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Toach and on this channel, I make content about the software development industry, usually through video reviews of different packages, services, libraries in the JavaScript ecosystem, and also through general tips and tricks and story time slash how I built that videos. So this video is going to be, I think it's either the fourth or fifth episode of my video reviews. And the star of today's video is the Vonage Video API, aka OpenTalk.js. So this is pretty much a library or rather a service which includes a bunch of libraries for building peer-to-peer -peer video features. So think like Zoom or Google Hangouts, stuff like that. So they have a bunch of SDKs that allow you to add this video calling feature to different platforms, including web, mobile, Android, iOS, etc, etc. But the one we're going to be focusing on is the web SDK. So the web SDK is built upon the web RTC standard which pretty much allows you to be able to capture media from the user's device, media including video as well as audio, and also to send said media back and forth over an open connection between two or more devices. So as usual, in going about doing this review, I went ahead and built a sample application using um, this Vonage Video API. And uh, in building the application, I wanted to focus on a few features, including you know the ability to initialize a call, the ability to join a call that's already been initialized and also the ability to be able to mute and unmute audio tracks uh, for each client or each device and also be able to turn on and off the video feed for each uh, device. So typically in these videos, this is the point where I make complaints about my experience with this service. But surprisingly, I, I have no complaints to make about this service. So it did exactly what I expected it to do as well as exactly what it claims it's able to do. So now I can't say whether or not this Vonage video API is the best tool out there on the market for getting for implementing these video calling features, but it certainly gets the job done. So now it's on to the review. First, we start with the documentation. So the documentation gets a 4.5 out of 5. So the documentation for this service is really, really good. It offers clear, direct and updated guides on how to implement the features that it offers. So much so that throughout my experience building the sample application, I never once had to, you know, go outside the documentation to find answers to things that I was looking for and I almost never even experienced any weird issues errors or bugs while working with this service so next up is the popularity the popularity gets a two out of five so on its github page it has about 150 some odd stars which is certainly not very impressive and it also has about um, 13 open issues on there as well so if I hadn't gone through the experience of building this Apple application assuming that uh, you know I was as a developer who's looking to add video features into my app and I just stumbled across you know the the NPM package or, or the GitHub page, and I saw that there were only 13 issues, that would have probably discouraged me from using this service. But because I've gone through it firsthand, at least at a at a basic but slightly comprehensive level, I know that I didn't experience too many issues. So to me, having gone through it, it's not that I'm not that surprised that there's only 13 open issues right now, simply because, like I said, the experience, the experience I had was pretty smooth throughout. So it has about 35K uh, weekly downloads on NPM. And when I do a topic search for either Vonage Video API or OpenTalk.js, which is also the name of its NPM package, or just OpenTalk itself, I came up with about 1,900 or so hits for, for this service. So in case this is your first video on here, and you're wondering why I even consider popularity. Popularity is very important as a developer because it determines how easily you can find resources that are that could be outside the documentation whenever you encounter er errors or issues that you know aren't normal. So pretty much the more popular a package is, the more likely the chance that if you encounter any issues and then you go Google them uh, or search them in Stack Overflow, the more likely it is that you will find other people who encountered those issues and and also potential solutions. So the learning curve here gets a four out of five. So the learning curve here is not bad at all. 
you know, assuming that you have solid JavaScript fundamentals and, you know, you understand the fundamentals of working with some sort of server environment and server SDKs, right? Then you won't have too much of a hard time getting in here and figuring things out. The documentation is great. And then the concepts themselves aren't too complex. So the setup for this one gets a three out of five. One reason why it didn't get a higher score is because there is a number of things you have to do before whatever code you write starts working. Pretty much you have to get an API key in order to make this work. And the way to do that is you have to go to the Vonage website. You have to answer a bunch of questions as you're signing up for an account, but it's really not, it's nothing too horrible. It's not the worst um, setup step that I've, that I've seen before, but it's definitely something that you need to do. But once you get through all the steps required to provision your account and get your API key, when it comes to writing the code, it's pretty simple. It doesn't take too much. I, I didn't write too much lines of code to be able to get, you know, something substantial uh, on the front end. So the setup for that reason, the setup gets a three out of five. So last but certainly not least is the pricing. The pricing gets a four out of five. So just to clarify, I'm only talking about their usage based per subscribed minute pricing tier. So they give you about 2000 minutes for $10 a month, which isn't a bad deal. So beyond that, they charge you about 0 0.004 cents for every 100,000 minutes up to 5 million minutes. So that's pretty much as deep as I'm gonna go as far as analyzing, you know, the pricing for this service is concerned, because I feel like a whole video can be made, you know, just on analyzing the pricing alone. So if you're considering using this platform, do go ahead and do your own due diligence to make sure that this is something that won't break the bank. And in addition to that, 2000, um, 2000 minutes a month should be more than enough for the little testing that needs to be done here and there while you're building the application. So in closing this package or rather this service gets a 3.5 out of five. So all in all, it was really, really good. Like I said earlier, I don't have any complaints to make about it. Pretty much everything that I expected it to do, it did. Everything that it claimed that it can do, it also did as well. So yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with the experience um, that I had working with this OpenTalk slash Vonage video API. And I wouldn't, you know, in in the future, if I ever needed to implement this video calling feature, I would definitely consider this as an option to do that. So that pretty much brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. And if you like this kind of content, consider subscribing. Other than that, I will see you next time. Take it easy. Uh, two more things actually. Uh, so, and I keep forgetting to mention this. Uh, so all of the code which I use to build a sample app um, will be in on my GitHub, which I'll leave a link to in the description. And secondly, if you're someone who has any kind of software development project to do in and around the JavaScript ecosystem, uh, consider reaching out. Um, so I'm talking whether it's a website or a web app or a cross-platform Android and iOS application, I'm pretty much the guy for the job. I'll leave a link to my website in the description and you should be able to get in touch with me there. All right. Thank you. See you later.